Okay, so I managed to find another huge batch of the very same E8600, which I recently ran, where, which I got up to like 6.93 GHz in CPU-Z validation and 6.8 Super by 1M, etc. I already pre-checked all of those CPUs very briefly on water. There are a few that can do like 4.5 pi fast at 1.2 volts or under. 5 gigahertz at 1.35 volts and some even below that. So the question mark is always the temperature scaling. Can the CPU scale very well from the cold temperatures? What is the maximum temperature on LN2 where the CPU can actually run and so on? So we are already looking for like close to 6.8 and higher gigahertz frequency in PyFast and other tests. So that boundary is already extremely high. So this would be like almost nonsense if we talked this kind of frequencies back in 2008 when the top frequency was somewhere between 6.65 and 6.7. But yeah, so uh, let's see what happens. I already tested one CPU, but it sucked. It had a sweet spot temperature at minus 120 and it could only run frequency between 6.5 and 6.55. Colder temperature started making it worse, the same thing as a uh, higher warmer temperature, I mean. It had a VID of 1.175. The VID is a very big question mark. I don't fully trust the so-called uh, sweet, uh, sweet spot range, which many people have usually uh, called as the best range for E8600, so between 1.175 and 1.25. Generally, the best CPUs have been in that range. But for example, this CPU I just tested was VID 1.175 and it wasn't very good. So uh, yeah, it's very hard to say what's the real and honest answer to the VID question. But anyways, that's uh, how it has been. Most of the CPUs or nearly all of them that have had a VID of like 1.15 or even lower 1.12, they have generally been very warm CPUs on water cooling in tests like W Prime, PyFast, etc. But they just they just cannot scale well from the cold temperatures, or that has been the case usually for the most part. But I think there are some uh, exceptions in existence, so very hard to say. But yeah, so Rampage Extreme, Nismo motherboard from Japan, two sticks of Corsair Dominator GDX, uh, GDX2 memory, bin by Tapaka or some OCX. F1 Dark CPU container from Wins Kimpin Lucido. Yes, this CPU bot definitely needs the tapping mode because the initial pull down is extremely slow. And actually, the response to LN2 pouring during test could be a bit better as well because even E8600 can actually output pretty decent heat load on the CPU container when it's running at 2 volts at very high frequency. NVIDIA 6500 GT just to display the monitor, signal and super flower, LEADX 8-pack, 2000 watt uh, LEADX power supply. So uh, yeah, let's hope for the best, let's see what happens. So uh, I'll start straight away in Windows XP once again. And if this CPU is good, I will get back to you with the capture card in the operating system.
Okay, that's the W Prime 1024 amp top score at 6.81. I think the efficiency is not the best, so uh, 340 uh, 5.516. So that's like a bit over four second improvement on my previous uh, top score, which was made at like uh, 6.73. Uh, so don't know, but it doesn't seem uh, the efficiency doesn't seem to be the best, but it's still somewhat okay. And well, <laughs> it's pretty cool to run. Uh, w Prime 1024 amp above 6.8. Now this is a historic moment. <laughs> Super by 32 and pass a 676. So I'm pretty, I'm very close on sub seven minute uh, run. Efficiency still a bit way, but I'm at least trying my best. It's so interesting. So managed to validate 696. Okay. 6984. And that is it. Ay, 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 ay. And I know you're the one I've been looking for. At least an E7 gigahertz. <laughs> and okay, that's pretty much it. Absolutely insane E8600. I tested a few of these CPUs and this one seems to be the best. Although even this one is very flaky. At first I struggled with uh, like W prime at 6.85 to 6.9. Uh, I managed to run 6.81 and, and almost 6.82 like constantly. I passed 6.85 uh, twice and I got a score of 337 seconds or so. Not sure if my efficiency is fully correct but because I think the results should be a bit faster at this uh, clock speed. But anyways, the frequency for W Prime 1024 amp is enormous already. Uh, 32 amp was definitely the biggest surprise because uh, on my previous CPU it had huge issues running 32 amp uh, stable at very good frequencies. The maximum it could do would, uh, was 6.6. .6, so I actually uh, went back to my old good one and took the rank one score with that one at 6.65, but although uh, very barely. Now I managed to run 32 amp once at 6.76, .6, 
with good memories of uh, like 2170 plus 67521 timings and the result was spot on 7 minutes. I tried to run the test the second time just to go under 7 minutes but yeah, it didn't want to pass. Usually it would crash at, at the first loops and if you manage to pass like loop 5 and loop 6 it would usually run the entire test so there's, there's still something going on and the whole system was very flaky. I've tested this CPU like 3 or 4 mounts already and every single mount the CPU has been uh, behaving differently. Not sure if uh, should I try the CPU on another motherboard because uh, I only use the Nismo motherboard from Japan so uh, I could uh, uh, like exclude some possible issues by using another motherboard but that will be for the next time because I need to use my remaining LN2 to, to practice a little bit more for the G-Skill World Cup uh, live uh, tournament or how's it called like live competition so uh, PyFast was up to 6.88 gigahertz and result was 13.53 I think so it's already like 30, 300 milliseconds faster than the rank 2 score made by Tapaka I think Super Pi 1M the highest frequency I managed to do was 6.91 I think and the result was I think it was 6.547 uh, I tried 6.93 but it always crashed uh, at the uh, half of the uh, at the middle part of the test I mean so uh, I'm sure I can improve a little bit more but that needs time and a lot of like fine-tuning and so on but we managed to validate 6.9 a4 and yes we did see 7 gigahertz 700 times 10 a few times on the CPU C uh, screen so that's already an enormous score if you ask me so that's the first CPU the first E8600 that has ever been seen at 7 gigahertz so uh, I'm sure I can get it but it needs time so uh, yeah we'll see what happens I still have quite a few of these CPUs remaining so I could even have a tiny bit better one but uh, I think this one ends up being the best uh, at the end anyways so the biggest question mark about these CPUs is the cold scaling even if you find a very good one like 4.5 pi fast 1.2 volts 5 gigahertz 1.35 volts it's never a guarantee you have to test the CPU on LN2 and this CPU has been pretty weird because it likes high PLL instead of low PLL like 1.55 to 1.6 so it's quite weird most of the time all of the Wolfdale CPUs they like a bit under 1.5 volts but yeah that's pretty much it so uh, enormous results absolutely enormous results compared to the rank 2 scores on hardwarebot.org so uh, if you are watching this video I have definitely already uploaded most of the uh, scores on the website so uh, definitely check them out if you are interested in them please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and maybe check out my patreon page as well if you want to support my work and yeah thanks for watching these uh, legendary LGA 775 overclocking results that will surely last a lifetime. If you come back at hwbot.org after 10 years or so, I'm pretty sure these results will still be at the top of the ranking on the website anyways. So very enormous results and these could be my best overclocking results ever to date during my whole uh, like overclocking uh, career if you can call it that which has lasted like 11 years or so already but yeah thanks for watching one of my videos once again and i will see you on the next one